I just want you guys to know, cop to cop. What are they doing with my Tupperware? What's up, everybody? This is Matthew with the initial reaction. And Caleb with the reaction to what Matt says. Actually, no, we're changing it. We're going to be changing the names from the initial... Mm -hmm. So if you're a newcomer, (laughs) disregard. Mm -hmm. If you're a loyal follower, we fucking appreciate the fuck out of you. (laughs) And we are missing a member. Andrew's back home for the holidays. Yeah, he he has to go see his family. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We're the only family you need. <clears throat> Anyways, we're switching the name up from initial reaction to... Initial thoughts and reaction. Initial thoughts and reaction. That, that's switching. the problem. It's like, what's it called? <laughs> reaction and review. There we it's go. nice and simple. Nice and simple. Mm-hmm. Straight to the point. I feel like Andrew's going to be a little mad because he's like, I wasn't there for that. Well, I wasn't there for the fucking last like four meetings you guys have had. We're having a meeting tonight, Matt. Oh, cool. What time? Oh, two o'clock in the morning. What movie are Bro, we talking about, Bro, you fucking realize Matt? I work at six tomorrow morning. <laughs> what movie did we just uh, go yes, see? Yes, we went to go see Richard Jewell. The world shall know his name. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This summer, <laughs> Richard Jewell. It was, it was really good. I loved this movie. Like I told Caleb at the end of it, it was definitely... Top ten for the latter half of the year. Yeah, I mean, I'd have to look at the movies, but yeah, it's it's it's. I would debatable, too, but like you know, coming away from it like right away, just boom, just. It's not fair because it's a true story, so it like, tugs your heartstrings a little bit. But See? like that's what I love about it because it's just like this happened. Yeah, and this guy went through all of this. His family, his, I mean, his mom. It basically was just like him and his mom, and this lawyer. Yeah. And it the was, fact, it was just it was there was a lot of wholesome moments between yeah. the lawyer, the mom, and Richard Jewell. Yeah. Who I think the guy did a fantastic job. I don't know his name, but he was an Itanya. He's freaking hilarious. Really? Oh, wasn't he a bodyguard? Was he one of the bodyguards? He was like quote unquote the bodyguard. Like, oh. Not, not like the, the one that did it. But it, I don't know. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think so. I don't know. I, I thought you were about to hold back because of spoilers. I was like, we all knew what happened. Also. Spoilers. This is a real event. We're going to talk about what the hell happened. <laughs> so, are we, are we talking about the movie entirely in spoilers or No, but like don't be afraid about. It. Just like uh, Yeah. We it's a true story. If you want to go see it, blah blah blah. Um, are you looking up his name? Yes. Um, uh, since we already talking about specific names, acting all around, Sam Rockwell, Kathy Bates, the guy that played Richard Jewell. All amazing. John yeah, Hamm, Olivia Wilde. I don't know if you mentioned those guys. Yeah. Oh, duh. Yeah, John Hamm. John Hamm was... <clears throat> I hated John Hamm's character, but that's exactly what yeah. they were going for. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, John Hamm is just fantastic. I love John yeah. Hamm. I just um, want him as Thomas Wayne already. The guy who plays Richard Jewell, his name is Paul Walter Hauser. Yeah. And he deserves the honorable mention because he was he was really good. It, it's just so uncomfortable just like seeing the way he talks. It's like, you're too nice. And like you, yeah. you don't, is he borderline autistic or something? Like he doesn't understand social um, situations I, as much. I don't know. Cause mm-hmm. he kind of was the same way in I, Tanya. It was just, it was kind of like, you know, he played. A is little, that just this character now? Is he typecasted? But he just, I love him. He's, mm-hmm. he's a, he's a great guy. And like, you know, there's definitely a few moments in this movie where like, where I kind of like almost started crying. Not like. Balling, but I just almost started tearing up because I'm just like, fuck, dude, this guy's just can't take advantage of. Yeah, and he's just an incredibly wholesome guy. He only wants to be a cop, he wants to do his job and be a loyal civilian and citizen. Respects the law. Yeah. Because, sir, ma'am. And, you know, the lawyer the entire time is like, stop! (laughs) Stop being nice! Get angry! And, like, yeah, it's just like you just want to shake him. It's like, dude, they're fucking you over. Yeah. Get angry. And it's just, it's so shitty of them because, like, it's like Sam Rockwell's character said. And basically what Richard Jewell said later in the movie, like, what if this happens again? And you, the world asks the FBI, what were you doing? And they said, oh, we have our eyes trained on Richard Jewell, the guy who didn't do it. Like, and I wish there was more, like, consequences to them. Like, yeah. they didn't get, uh, like, any pun, like, not punishment, but, like, nothing happened from what they were doing. I was really hoping that, like, they would try to sue them for exactly. something, but it's like, I, I don't think that they technically could have... Right, I mean, like... Because it's like he was a suspect and, like, you can't... I mean, maybe you could sue, like, the journalist... Co- uh, the... They might. Newspaper. Because, yeah. like, that is, like, defamation. or Not defamation, but, like, it was 88 days of just a pure nightmare. Yeah, yeah hell. 
Um, if you're a lawyer, let us know what, what yeah. can be done in this situation. Mm-hmm. Because I, I was thinking about the, the logistics of it. It's like, do they pay Sam Rockwell? Is he doing it pro bono? I mean, it wouldn't make sense because now he's known as like the lawyer that saved Richard Jewell. So I, I would hope that he would do it pro bono because, mm-hmm. like, you know, watching his character's relationship between Richard Jewell and right. the uh, the mom. No, the the lawyer's name. Um, I was like, it's either Bryant. The, it like, Bryant. It was like William Bryant. I think so. Will Bryant, something like that. Um, Sorry, we're butchering everything. Yeah. Probably. <clears throat> um, but yeah, just like you know, within the first five minutes of the movie, we get introduced to his character. Uh, Sam Rockwell's character and you know you're just like oh god okay this guy's gonna be kind of tough yeah it, it and then was, he's just like I need some tape and he's like oh I got you there's some tape and new box of pans in there <laughs> and he's like alright don't look at my trash <laughs> yeah that was kind of funny it, it was nice just like seeing him yell I just love yelling in movies it's just and also just like there was something like broke my heart he like when uh, Sam Rockwell was like why did you call me? Why didn't you call any other lawyer in the phone book? There's lots of lawyers. And he's like, because you're the only one that I know. You're the only one that treated him like a human being mm-hmm. in the five years. In that the, whole building. Yeah. And I was just like, damn. So, that, I mean, it really kind of just like makes you think that Sam, like Sam Rockwell's character is just a genuine, yeah, good and amazing guy. Yeah. He may, he may have a hard exterior, but he's got a soft, mushy inside. Because like at first he was going to help Richard with this book deal that he got mm-hmm. just you know maybe ooh, maybe some quick cash okay yeah. cool I'm kind of struggling but you know. which I hope they did end up doing because I feel like in the credits it. they mentioned a book yeah which they needed some money Richard didn't have a job for like two months three months yeah and if Rockwell was doing that pro bono he wasn't getting paid there was that scene with him and Nadia which their relationship was cute yeah where she was like getting all excited because like this is gonna be big for us yeah like, yeah because they were like struggling it didn't look fun for them yeah before. she was just like okay yeah because we'll have three of these big juicy cases coming in tomorrow and you've got so much to do and i've got so much to do <laughs> oh my god i freaking uh, love sam rockwell i wish he was an iron man more what was his name he reminds me a lot justin hammer he, he looks like a, a skinnier a skinnier edward norton can there be a skin here, Edward Norton? Yeah. Edward Norton's already pretty skinny. Yeah, true. I don't know. He kind of like I look at him. And I look at. Uh, it's because he's tall. Maybe I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, this movie was. Just, it was just so good. It was really well done. I just I loved. I, I loved everything about it. I mean, mm-hmm. there wasn't really. A, I don't think there was anything. Maybe pacing could have been better. I, that's the only really. I thing. don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm scraping the barrel to find something bad with it. Yeah, I mean, like, in the <clears throat> beginning, like, it was tense, because, like, it mm-hmm. was just, like... <sighs> yeah, the first act was nice. <sighs> and then, like, you know, they get into, like, the uh, the bureaucratical stuff with, mm-hmm. like, you know, don't answer that, don't say that, don't say anything, because yeah. they will fuck you over. Dude, it makes you hate the FBI. They were going through... They <laughs> found two loopholes to catch this guy without reading him as Miranda rights, making him sign shit. Yeah. That was scummy. Yeah. And when his lawyer was gone, he's like, come here, come here. You need to, you need to say this. Come yeah. Here. And then he comes back in and he's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, I'm getting this stuff, like, expelled mm. or whatever he said. <laughs> and what didn't help is the partner, uh, John Hamm's partner, reminded me of, um, did you see Pain and Gain? Yes. Um, the guy that owned the gym, bald-headed guy, he's always in comedies as, like, the asshole. Yes. Is, he reminded is he in The Office? Probably. He's in Step Brothers, maybe. He's always in, like, a Will Ferrell or Mark Wahlberg movie. But, like, he reminded me of that actor. And he's always like the asshole comic relief. David and stuff. Cockner? I think so. Let me see. Oh, uh, oh no, not him. But he, that's what oh, he that reminded me of. Was that that was him? I'm thinking um, of a different. I'll bring it up later. For people who are wondering who I'm talking about, um, if you've seen The Office, he plays Todd Packer. Um, mm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who you're talking about. Oh no, the faces are blending. A hot tub time machine. Um, I'm pretty sure he was the guy in there. Uh, oh no! I know exactly who you're yeah, talking about. Now. They they have yes. the same haircut. They're bald. Yes, Rob Cordy. Yes, that's who he reminded oh. me of. <laughs> God, what a weird tangent we're on. It, John Hammer's partner reminded me of of Cordy, and it was like, yeah, you're just always an asshole. And yeah. I don't like you right now. Honestly, the only kind of part that I had trouble following was when they uh, went after Richard Jewell's friend because mm-hmm. i was just like he wasn't he was in the movie for like two seconds yeah. at the beginning at like shooting yeah and it's like okay you brought him in to kind of like establish him as a character mm-hmm. 
but then you just kind of forgot about him for a while and then you came back to him and you're like oh hey we're, we're, we're like we need you it, it was, was like he was just like standing outside the apartment and it was yeah. like dark and i'm like who the fuck is this new guy <laughs> right um it was i'll straight that like when it was nice bringing him in because it did make you think like oh it could have been an accomplice because when sam rockwell did the whole timing thing and we're just like yeah he's totally innocent yeah. Like, there's no way. And then you don't think there could be an accomplice. So it was nice seeing how the FBI was thinking about it. So I was like, okay, I guess. But yeah, he's still innocent. And he's not a homosexual. I this like looking true. at women. <laughs> that, that was very funny. Um, I, was to think. I mean, overall, the atmosphere of this movie was just... It kind of gave off like a really mm-hmm. tense vibe. Because, I mean, like this was something that happened. These were... Yeah most likely loosely based around the events that actually had happened because you know movie magic and Mm -hmm. you got to keep that stuff going right but it was still just like this movie kept you like it gripped you Mm -hmm. and it brought you in and especially at the end when the the fbi agents came in threw the paper at him and just like i think your client's guilty as hell it's like bro he's not he's not okay look at the donut he's eating a single fucking glazed donut a chocolate glazed donut and he looks fucking adorable i was dying for that man I would die for him. Do you think, um, because they showed his heart problems a few times in the movie, do you think this stress added on oh, absolutely. to what, could, yeah, because stress can just affect your heart. And so, yeah. like, if this never happened, he could still be alive today. I mean, granted, he was not a healthy man. No, I mean, yeah, because, I mean, his mom, you know, kind of brought in, like, the whole mm. uh, fast food, fast food, fast food. Right. And then, like, you know. He's got the rough. He saw, yeah. <laughs> He saw how it was affecting his mom, and like that's when it started. And then you right. know, he was outside walking the dog, and photographers were taking pictures and pictures and pictures. Yeah. And he was just I like, would not want to be in a situation like that. Like, how do you just trying to walk through that, yeah. feeling like a monster when you know deep down you're not? Yeah. And that's what I really liked about that little dream he had, where he was back in the scene, and like everyone was looking at him. Yeah. Like he was like the monster. And I don't think that. Still... I think they were just like kind of like staring. Yeah. But I just I really liked that. He had the dream that he covered himself over the bomb. Like, like that's just Captain shows, America moment. Yeah, like that just shows that. That like, was in the trailer too. One of the trailers. Yeah, I was kind of like confused because I'm like, when is that going to happen? And it was a dream <laughs> sequence. And I'm like, oh, okay. It makes sense. It's not like a deleted scene or like taking the, the rug under our feet. Yeah. Um, and th- this does hit it close to home, where we do live in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. We we're not from here, so it's. We don't yeah. know the history because we, we weren't born during that time. But it's yeah. it's still yeah, just we were. Like, 96. We were alive. I thought it happened in the 80s. No, they met in the 80s. And then it went like eight uh, years in the future. It's 96. The okay. Yeah, there was, a, there was a little bit of, bit of weird time jumps in the beginning. Yeah. But. That, that was, I was going to be like, that was another like little problem. So it was a little jumpy at the beginning. Yeah. And then at the end when they skipped again. But it's like you had to build these relationships with these two. Yeah. <clears throat> and if that's what actually happened between these two characters, then, you know, whatever. Yeah, even cooler. Um, yeah, this was pretty, a longer reaction than we usually have. Go see this movie, guys. Yeah, it was really good. Also, once you see it, come yeah. back and just look at this and you'll just, you'll kind of yeah. understand. It's kind Probably of Probably would have been easier if I took them out of the box. But if you get the reference, it's just a joke. If you can't laugh at anything, Comedy is the best medicine. We're not being offensive. My pantyhose! <laughs> What's your grade, Matt? Ah. Uh, Off the top of your head. Nine out of ten. Yep. I give it a a minus around yeah, there. I mean, it was just it was a really great. Movie. It's a good, it's a good feel good movie. I'm really happy we just decided to go see it. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Yeah. Low action. It's just drama. Drama and yelling. Yeah. You need you need these uh. You need these uh. These like. You know, movies that just nothing really happens. It's just yeah. a lot of story driven mm-hmm. stuff to kind of bring you back down to reality. Yeah, I think it's a true testament of how good a script is when you can just write the whole thing and I have a single insert fight scene yeah. that takes up 20 minutes of the thing. I mean, you had a bomb go off. Dialogue. Like, you know. the, the movie didn't focus around the bomb, and that's what I loved. It focused around Richard Jewell, mm-hmm. and that was, that was really nice because it showed you that this man. All he wants in life is to just be a law enforcement official. Yeah, life just shits on him. And, right. like, you get it. He might not be the best candidate. Could have gotten better shape. Yeah, but, I mean, he made it to desk jockey mm-hmm. at the end of the movie. That's so. fine. Yeah. Rest in peace, Richard Jewell. Yeah, absolutely. You're Thank a true you hero. hero. Anyways, guys. Okay. This has been Caleb. This has been Matthew. Bye. We love you. Bye.